Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamazi here, and tonight I want to talk to you all a little bit about 10.0 Affliction. Why it's doing better in the raid on certain fights, like Tarot, Stathia, just doing it better in general than we thought it might be doing. Some Sims, some changes that came to AF a few weeks ago, and some big changes that are coming to AF in 10.0.5 PTR, which I would assume patch 10.05 is hitting within a month or so. And uh, yeah, just go from there. Answer the question you guys might be having about those. I've been getting a lot of questions about AF over the past two weeks or so. Now, I will say right now, 10.05 PCR has been down for like two weeks at this point. Whenever it comes back up, we'll get on there and test it out. But unfortunately, it's been down since before the holidays, but hopefully it changes soon. So I'm pumped to see where AF's at because in its current form, AF is better than it may seem. Now, two things we get to far in the video. Number one, I have indeed updated and fixed some bugs in the warlock central week war that i use if you guys are using it as well uh twitter and discord links down below or twitch and discord links down below if you want to grab that week war or any of week wars in general update it it's in there and number two i want to give a huge shout out to my patrons guys thank you a million times for supporting patreon really appreciate it if you're looking at supporting on patreon or following any kind of social media links that kind of stuff uh they're all up here for you guys as well as down below in the video description so with that being said let's just get right into it Okay, so the big question that I've been getting recently, I guess the biggest one, there's been a handful about AF, but the biggest one is why is Affliction seeing play in both the Incarnates? We thought it was terrible. Why is it seeing play now? What's going on? So briefly skimming over Mythic Vault, the Incarnates here, Aranog, still a huge demo fight, single target, Prayo, Stat Cleave, Implosion, Demonic Strength, all that, not surprising. However, Taros is a wall of Affliction locks with one Destro in the middle, hey, uh, I guess it is what it is, but a lot of Affliction. Now scrolling down more, Promo Council, mostly Demo. Sonarth, a top AF parse in number one. Number 10 being one here as well. Dathia having a handful of parses here as well. There was one on Brewkeeper, but it's mostly Demo stuff now. However, a few fights, there's AF seeing play. So, jumping into Taros here to explain this briefly. So, these kill times here, 637, 618, 616, 636, 634, 635, even five, these ones. Basically, every kill time but this one, which is incredibly fast are bad kill times for Demo and bad kill times for Destro for the most part because Demo CD is basically at 6, like 615-ish, 620 with another portal, which means you're getting full Pit Lord value at like 645, I think roughly, maybe a bit more or less, give or take, depending on your previous portal timing. But Taros is not good for Demology CDs. A lot of movement, it's hard to minimax portal. Similar thing with Destro, right? You're Infernaling at zero, at three, at six. And he got a handful of Infernal value here at 618. But when it comes to AF, you see at basically zero, two, 225-ish, like four, 420-ish roughly, depending on the, the kill time and all that. But you can get a handful of CDs in. PI lines up well in the fight, zero, two, four, six, if you're going that far. It's just a better fight, number one, for CDs, for AF compared to Demo and Destro. Number two is that Affliction is very mobile. Demo is as well, but Demo is very precise and precarious when it comes to casting another portal, things like that. Destro is not removable, and we know, we know that. So when it comes to AF in this fight, timings on kills, better. Mobility, just better. The big thing when it comes to AF, though, and really just AF in general when we're playing Dread Touch, is Dread Touch uptime, right? So looking at this fight here, we can pull up the actual parse. Now, I had, I think, a 78... 78 or 79 percent uptime on dread touch and our kill this week i've only played af like three or four poles over the course of the entire duration of dragon fight so far in both well i guess every poll has been on taros right now the big thing once again is maintaining dread touch dread touch is going to be your main i wouldn't say source of damage but it's a six second maintenance buff which is very very important to maintain because your dots do 30 percent more damage while dread touch is active so if it falls losing a good bit of damage now the important thing is finding the middle ground between rapturing too often and just overlapping dread touches and not rapturing enough because you want to still pull shards for singularities for dark light windows all that kind of stuff but still maintain dread touch so pulling up this person's dread touch up time i don't know what it actually is but let's take a look here uh we're sitting at i think what's the other one here uh yeah we're sitting at a solid 88 percent which is actually very very high now not in general but for a fight like taros that's higher than most logs that i've seen but hey once again it goes to show how important dread touch uptime is for affliction right now realistically i'll make a video on 10.05 changes what i want to see i'd like to see a longer duration on dread touch but hey it is what it is he had an 88 percent uptime the other warlock had let's see 83 there you go so uh, variants in two piece, four piece procs with instant cast raptures can affect that as well. But the big thing is that dread touch, very important to maintain. But regardless, Taros as affliction from my own POV feels so much better than demonology for Destro. Mobility is great, 
refresh dots on the move. You can soul tap on the move if you want. It just feels good. And when it comes to single target damage, it's actually not that far behind, right? So briefly, other parts is here. We have, I believe we have uh, the spider boss in Arth, right? Now this build's a bit different. You actually end up playing Wrath of Consumption in this fight. Wrath of Consumption, and you're playing uh, Vile Taint here as well for a little spider spiderling ads, right? So number one, applies agonies. Agony generates more stacks of ID. Number two, it, it feeds Vile Taint, or sorry, it feeds Wrath of Consumption. But besides that, you're playing basically a single target. Haunt, Haunt the Soul, Creeping Death, Malefic Affliction, Dread Touch, right? It gives you an odd emphasis on dots with Dread Touch, with Afflictions, and full stacks of Wrath of Consumption. And this is like maybe a, a bit of a niche build, but also very powerful. If you, can, if you can roll a high Wrath uptime while maintaining Dread Touch, while maintaining UA with Afflictions, while maintaining Creeping Death, which is just passive, essentially just having the ability, right? Look at the uptime here on Wrath of Consumption. Let's find this here, actually. I believe it's uncategorized. Uh, it is 84% uptime on Wrath of Consumption. And once again, Wrath gives you a whopping 15%. Yeah, I, th I thought it was two ranks for some reason, but 15% increase to your dot damage for 30 seconds. So you have Wrath stacking with Dread Touch, stacking with Malefic Affliction, stack just being synergistic with Creeping Death, working with Haunted Soul. And this niche build of AF is actually very, very powerful. I guess this build here is very, very powerful if you can make it work properly, right? So niche build, good on the move, also good single target, all the above. AF is rising a bit on Sonarth. And when it comes to Dathia, it's, it's a bit different as well. So if we sort Dathia, for example, let's go Dathia, boss damage, right? Now, th this is Warlocks, obviously, but we'll exclude Warlocks and just go all classes, right? So all classes here. Some BMs, some hunters, but look at all the AF locks. AF, AF, demo, AF, 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 AF. There's a bunch of AF locks in here. There's only like 10 or 11 AF kills in this fight, I'm pretty sure, too. But the big thing with AF, once again, if you're on the main platform, not killing ads, dot the boss, maintain dots, just dread touch, do single target AF stuff, you're a warlock. You, you can live through everything, right? You have ID. You can drain life and heal for a million, a million HPS if you need to, right? You can sustain. It brings good single target, good mobility, good sustainability. AF's just good in this fight when it comes to raw boss damage. If you're killing ads, not the best, but AF's not as bad as it may seem in single target. Now, you might be, ask, you might be asking yourself, okay, well, how bad or where, where is AF actually at in single target? So, now that we're done with logs, I have my current sims. So, currently, my AF is simming at 70,745 DPS. And I do have uh, Aaron Og Ring. I have a Whispering Carn Icon. Yeah, I'm pretty juiced up, I know. Demonology sitting at 74,817. So about 4K DPS more. However, this is the pure single target build demo, which you really don't play in any setting anymore. You can play it on Terros, but like Fell Covenant, it feels terrible. Uh, and you really don't play this build in any fight, really. Like Terros, maybe like Snarth, you're playing it. But you mostly play Demonologist Cleave build, which is like implosion, more cleave based without Fell Covenant and, you know, the Demon Bolt modifiers like, you know, like Fell Covenant and Sack Souls, right? So... That build sims, I think, 3-ish K lower than this build, about around 71, roughly. Destruction, on the other hand, six or 76,282. This is actually my highest sim. But Destro, pretty immobile. At the same time, Demonology scales, still scales better with Power Infusion, Bloodlust, Heroism, Haste kind of effects. So, Affliction, the worst by, I guess, the worst by about 4,000 DPS, roughly, right? If you take away the pure single target element here by 2K, roughly, maybe by 3 or 4K. But at the same time, so I went through Affliction. Uh, so I went through Affliction Sims. I ran a sim and said, "Hey, I want to see. I want to see what the opener looks like and how it's performing. What it's doing rotationally in the sim right now." I asked around, and from what I've heard, no one's maintaining the Affliction Warlock like APO currently. Like no one's looking to optimize it in things. It functions, but it's not optimal, right? So keep in mind, once again, seventy thousand seven hundred DPS sim roughly. I think right now, when it comes to the opener, it's not terrible, but certainly some optimizations can be made, right? So now you're playing soul tap here. So realistically, you want to soul tap the five shards before the boss is pulled. So no soul taps here, but it's fine. Uh, so you go haunt into UA. That works fine. Agony, corruption, siphon life. It should be corruption here, but not a big deal. This is all fine. But then it soul taps for some reason in the middle of your opener. I don't know why. Uh, there should be a drain soul here for three stacks of shadows embrace, but it doesn't drain here. Then it just rapture some, for some reason. Then it casts singularity. Then it dark glares, then it raptures three times, and then it drains souls. Like so, 
you don't get any shadows embrace value you get one stack from haunt because you don't you don't have your max stack shadows embrace value here at all until until you dump four raptures a potion a dark layer and all your dots right now it goes malefic affliction, malefic affliction stack one here ma stack two here stack three here and this is the actual dread touch trigger roughly with this rapture but you're missing out on six percent from shadows embrace you're missing out on you have a weird soul tap here uh you're missing out on some dot extensions here just with like raw duration between these it's an odd opener i'm not really sure why it does this but it could be optimized for sure probably get a little bit more dps out of it but so outside of that it's okay uh i have seen some issues with like with like maintaining dread touch for example like it'll rapture like here at 22 and a rapture again here at 28 barely catching dread touch there, there's times it'll go for like 10 seconds without rapturing so it falls it is what it is could be rng could be shard effects it's hard to like you know optimize sims with, with your two piece four piece being proc based and instant cast and all that stuff right but it could be maybe improved a bit more there when it comes to raw dread touch uptime however the one thing that's off here as well is that so when you're playing affliction in single target you want to cast phantom singularity essentially on cooldown for the most part right so it's singularity is at five seconds here roughly uh right there and it's singularity is again here i believe at 50 52 right however so 52 i would assume this one's at like 135 Let's see it's about one 140 right you're supposed to hold your dark glare for your next singularity which is around 220 it'd be 225 here right so did you, it just yolo rips the dark glare at 207 with no singularity up no real dot value it raptures like three or four times but you don't have a singularity yet. it just yellows the dark layer here and then it yellows singularity like 15 seconds later now this timing is right on singularity but this dark layer is not it should be holding dark layer for singularity here as well um and then outside of that i mean for the most part it seems okay i didn't look through all of it super in depth once again dread touch can be maintained a bit longer but either way there's probably now as i live in florida i'm not great at math I don't it's hard to extrapolate this out but like I there's certainly more damage here if you're playing af properly than this sim shows I don't know if it's like it's not like 10k dps I'd assume maybe a couple thousand maybe possibly probably not even that if you optimize the opener more but 70 000, 745 is not actually what I'd sim for when it comes to uh when it comes to like what I actually do in game if the sims optimize more I'm probably somewhere around 72 which is not that far off demonology and Maybe a bit off Destro, but let's be honest, Destro's pretty mobile. You're not really playing it in single target. Now, the big thing as well is that, so Affliction received a handful of buffs, I believe week two of Vault of the Incarnates, which is right here. So they buffed Rapture by a whopping 15%. They buffed Drain Soul and Shadow Bolt being your failures by 20%. And they buffed Pandemic Invocation by 500%. Now, PI Pandemic Invocation uh, deals very little damage. It still does very little damage, but it dealt even less previously. Now, this is sort of important because obviously rapture is your main source of damage in single target ua is close that's sort of a given but there are more changes coming to affliction warlock in patch 10.0.5 which are going to increase your value a good bit now from what i've seen i believe these changes here from what i read in the lock discord from people that ran sims are smarter than me uh they amounted to like a, i believe roughly a six percent dps increase right around there for affliction however there are a handful of changes coming in 10.05 which are not in these sims which from what i've read also amount to about a six percent dps increase for affliction so here they are for those that don't know focus malignancy the conduit from shadowlands is coming back as a talent and this is one great way to address affliction's lack of single target so they're making it a two rank talent left left rapture deals 15 percent and 30 percent more damage to targets suffering from unstable affliction now ua is limited to one target in pve you know in pvp hey you can have three have fun i don't pvp but this is a great way to address aft's lack of single target by bringing back focus malignancy and to a similar extent and the making vocation is also changing they're adding a, a modifier to it that, so they're basically doing this so they're removing soul tap in 10.05 10.0.5 it's gone right this is just gone deleted they're moving pandemic invocation from here to here making pi a rank one like one out of one talent and putting it right here they're, they're also buffing the damage of it to be the full two out two value we have currently at retail so moving this to here making it one point just like soul tap is and they're making focus malignancy your talent of choice right here and that will be ranked you know, it'll have two ranks on it so this row of talents is going to be essentially if you're playing the single target build which is like right here 
you're going to be going Siphon Life into ID, into Focus Malignancy, into Creeping Death, into Malefic Afflictions, into Dread Touch. That is a huge single target row, right? That is actually huge damage, or I guess huge value when it comes to that, right? Um, and it's not too hard to obtain. You're already going through this node basically with every talent before it in single target, so you can definitely get Focus Malignancy very, very easily, right? So it's solid. It's a good change all around. And interestingly enough, so let's say that I'm simming Let's say that I'm simming at roughly, you know, 70, let's just say 70.7, right? 70, taking 6% damage from this, let's say when FM hits retail, 10.0.5, that's like 4.2k DPS. So I would say roughly AF with the changes, I would be sitting around 75,000 DPS. But once again, <laughs> the APL scuffed. So like, even with, the, even with the APL being scuffed, if you add this raw value into here, it's already above demo, and it's very close to Destro without the changes to the APL. So if you're an Affliction Enjoyer, AF could be looking, AF looks to be possibly very, very, very strong heading into 10.0.5, not OP or anything. I want to clarify a lot of classes, like a lot of range classes are sort of doing mediocre damage right now. Like I think Boomkin's okay. Arcane's obviously pretty strong. Demo can be okay with like PIs, Lust, and there's some niche spots where Destro is doing okay damage too, right? But for the most part, I think casters in general are a bit weaker than melee. Um, so, hey, buffs are warranted. It's fine. I'll take them. I'm not saying, you know, buff Warlock in like a meme kind of, you know, way. But I think Affliction's looking very good when it comes to just 10.05 stuff. Now, there's a couple more changes coming in 10.05 as well. Um, they're bringing back Soul Swap, which is big. So this is not going to just be randomly applying dots anymore. It's going to be how it used to be like in WAD in older expansions, right? It copies your dots from your target, preserving their duration. Your next cast of Soul Swap will exhale them essentially onto whatever target you hit. A new target. And I want to clarify, I wanted to double check and make sure it said a new target, but it does. So I initially thought, can I just Soul Swap a target with Singularity on it, maybe even Soul Rot on it, then when those dots fall, exhale onto it again. You can't, but this does give you a bit of reach when it comes to like, okay, target spawning. Like Dathia, for example, the Storm Ads, right? You're hitting the boss, add spawning, Soul Swap, exhale. Dots are up, you're juiced up, right? Now, there are two big things here. Number one is that unstable affliction is limited to one target in Dragonflight. It was not that way back in the in olden times, right? Where you could have multiples up. I would assume Soul Swap moves your unstable affliction, which you might not want at times. It might just be the way that it is. I'm not sure. That seems a bit awkward though. Might have to look at, look at, at addressing that, but probably just gonna be the world we live in. Number two, is that back in the day you could soul burn soul swap which soul burn is back and around this expansion right so soul burn used to empower soul swap right where you cast soul burn and i forgot the exact wording out but basically your next soul swap would apply all your dots you didn't you didn't have to inhale them you just soul burn soul swap all your dots are up right so uh you'd like precast haunt or whatever and you just go soul burn like okay you theoretically would go soul burn and it's like and just soul swap, soul swap on pull and apply all your dots, have them rolling quickly off the bat. You're ramped up, ready to go right off the bat in a patchwork setting. And it works even on ads, works in every fight you want. If they add functionality back to soul burn, being able to empower soul swap, that'd be really cool. And that would probably make soul swap a worthwhile choice in single target. Even with it being, I mean, obviously with it being its current form, or I guess, you know, upcoming form in 10.05, it's good on certain fights like Dathia, things where ads are spawning, right? Like large prior ads. But this is not going to be taken in single target ever, right? If they're okay with that, it's fine. More of a niche utility kind of trait, but it still costs a soul shard. And for the most part, it's a bit, I feel a bit lackluster with the UA being limited to one thing. However, once again, if they made soul burn empower soul swap, that'd be really cool. Now, soul burn for the most part is basically utility stuff. It does work with demonology, another portal. That's just sort of a weird gimmicky thing that they probably don't like. But if they made soul burn empower soul swap, I think it put AF in a pretty good spot. I mean, a better spot already, but... Uh, functionality wise, I think AF is looking really strong in 10.05. Single targets good. When it comes to like current AB stuff on retail though, so from what I've seen, most players are playing something like this when it comes to Mythic Plus. It's like Dark Lair, Grim Reach, Dark Harvest stuff. And your single target is abysmal. Now, Focus Malignancy will help that in 10.05, even playing this build, right? So for example, Pandemic Invocation is going here. You don't really want this in Mythic Plus, right? So you can pull a point out of here. And let's say you go one point here. Uh, you go, let's say you put two points here, right? You can still fill in basically your double talent points here in these rows. You have Haunt, Full Dark Lair, Full Dark Harvest, Sorot Row. You don't have Creeping Death, but you have 
put full focus malignancy. You have haunt. You could even pull this point here theoretically and put it in creeping death if you wanted. But you have that emphasis on single target with malignancy being around right now. How much does this amount to? I'm not sure, but the option is still there. Now there's also a world we maybe just play, end up playing siphon life and plus anyways siphon life by Altaint because theoretically you're spamming seed and plus right. So. I guess theoretically you don't really need to play AC a whole lot, but I mean, quality of life, we'll see where it goes. But either way, having focus malignancy back, will I feel will be that, that crutch, like with Withering Bolt, that Achilles heel that holds up AF in the scenarios and settings where it was a bit lackluster before, right? Currently you're playing, I've seen most AFs just playing Grim Reach, Dark Harvest stuff, playing to your strengths, which is AOE and plus. You have good AOE, Algathars, other keys, Soul Flame damage, just blow it up. And you sort of just, just said, hey, a single target's where it sucks, but this is the world I live in. However, once again, 10.0.5 could change that. So it's not on PTR now. We'll see where it goes. But if you're an AF enjoyer, next month or so, whenever it actually hits retail, might be a good time for you. So yeah, that should about wrap it up. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope the video answered the questions you guys might have had about Affliction just being well or being better, performing well in dungeons. And I guess more so Vault of the Incarnates uh, over the past few weeks. I've gotten so many questions about why is AF doing good in Vault? I thought it was terrible. And I will say that, I mean... I might have thought AF was worse than it actually was. I didn't really play with it a whole lot after the buffs came in because I was in race, in California at the Race World first and things. But the most recent buffs to Rapture, to Drain Soul, and to like PI, I think for the most part made it acceptable, playable, made it fine. Once again, Demo's still better in single target with PI, Bloodless Scaling, all that. Deshra's probably still better in single target too, maybe. But AF's, not too bad. And it's very mobile, customizable, and on fights like Dathia, like Taros with good TD timings, even like, once again, Sonarth with Wrath of Consumption, you can get a lot of value out of AF. So we'll see what the future holds, but either way, 10.05, when it hits PTR, we'll be taking a look at it for sure on stream. Here, as far as raw damage is concerned, we'll look at it and break it down, but until it's actually up again, it's been down for a few weeks, this is where we live in, but I'm pumped for it. AF looks good. If you're an AF enjoyer, things looking great for you. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked the video, be sure to smash the like and sub buttons below. It helps out a ton. Uh, once again, any weak wars, add-ons or profiles you saw in the video, links to them all in my Twitch Discord. Links to those down below as well if you want to grab them for free. And once again, I also want to give one huge final shout out to my patrons. Guys, thank you a million times for supporting Patreon. I appreciate it. Thank you so much 10,000 times, guys. Uh, if you're looking at supporting on Patreon, it should be a link up here as well as down in the video description below. Now, I'm guessing 10.05 is probably, I'd say a month away at max. I'm, I venture to guess that over the next few days and probably week or so, we hear a lot about 10.0.5 PTR because holidays are over, Liz is back in the office, and it's been down for two weeks, but for a while it said no servers available. The last couple hours or so of literally tonight, the servers are, are there, they're just not online. So I'm assuming the next 48 hours or so, we'll be able to actually take a look at, uh, I guess, asked about 10.0.5 PTR. We'll see where it goes. My birthday is Saturday on the 7th, so that'd be a nice birthday present. Maybe some Warlock buffs would also be a nice birthday present. We'll see where it goes. Blizz, fingers crossed, Ian helped me out, but uh, yeah. So, with well, that being said, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you all again soon on stream. Peace!